الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الرسل وافضل الخلق محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله واصحابه افضل الصلاه واتم التسليم All thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one and only true God Whomever Allah guides, no one can lead astray. And whomever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. Salah and salam, mercy and forgiveness on the Prophet Muhammad, on his family, his companions, his followers. To the Day of Judgment, may Allah grant us to be one of those followers. Today, as part of talking about building a Muslim personality, Muslim character, we've talked about quite a few aspects. Today, one ayah, one sign in Surah Al-Kahf caught my attention and I really wanted to um, talk a bit about it. It's, I'm going to read the ayah and then I'm going to talk a bit about the ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, بِالْغَدَاتِ وَلَا عَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَا وَلَا تَعَدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُطْعَ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانْ أَمْرُهُ فُرْضًا This ayah is, let's first of all say why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this sign. And then we'll explain the ayah and then we'll talk about um, uh, lessons to be learned from the ayah. So this ayah happened, or uh, Muslim uh, narrated, that uh, Sayyidina Sa'ad al Waqqas, he's one of the companions, he said, I was sitting with six of my fellows with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And he was sitting with the high and mighty in Quraysh, Ashraf Quraysh, the, the leaders, the, the top traders, the, 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 the tribe leaders. So they told Sayyidina Muhammad, of course, they're, non, they're non-Muslims, the, the, those aristocrats are non-Muslims. They told Sayyidina Muhammad, why don't you kick these people away? How dare they sit with us? How they, they sit amongst us? So the Prophet just thought to himself, is it worth letting them go so I can speak to these people? Well, maybe they'll listen to me. So immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. Now, what does the ayah mean? Associate yourself, have perseverance with those that remember and that ask Allah day and night. In other words, the mu'mineen. Don't look away from them. Don't disassociate yourself from them. We'll talk about the meanings and the 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 the, the metaphors of Allah and and and, and um, 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 that he mentions. Don't look away to read the dunya, wishing the bounty of this world. Do not follow those that follow their, that in their heart they're following their desires and have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the whole life is a life of wastage. In other words, Allah is telling the Prophet Muhammad, no, no, don't kick these people. And this has happened, uh, this, has, this may be the same message has um, been revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad in multiple ayat, in multiple um, surah. In fact, not just Sayyidina Muhammad, into other prophets, they always come with this one. You know, those, those, those poor commoners, just, just kick them away. Talk to us. We're, we're, we're the aristocrats. We're the people that you should be, should be talking to. A message from Allah SWT, isn't it? All right. So that's why it was revealed. Now let's just try and understand, try and understand the surah. Or try and understand this ayah. First of all, this ayah is in the middle of two stories in Surah Al-Kahf. The first story is about the group of youths that ran for their lives from their people and went into a cave, stayed in the cave for 300 years or so. Um, they slept for 300 years and they came back. They found the whole nation 
that was uh, that was um, uh, literally following them and tracking them and trying to kill them, the whole entire kingdom or nation had become Muslim. That was the first story. The second story is a discussion between two people. A very powerful rich person had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them, had two gardens. Rivers were in, in both gardens. Can you imagine a garden with rivers? He owned the river and the garden. That's how big his, his, his property. And a poor, weak Muslim. He was trying to convince him that don't think that your money and your wealth and your power is going to save you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this ayah. What's the context of, of, um, of, um, of, of saying this ayah between these two? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just before this ayah, he says, Allah is telling the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read the Qur'an. After this ayah, what does Allah say? Allah says, مَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَقْفُرْ And then he talks a bit about the reward for the Iman and the reward for disbelieving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what does that tell us? That tells us, or, or it raises questions, what's the path that I need to follow to become a believer? How do I maintain my belief? What actions do I need to do or what actions do I need to avoid to maintain on this path? How do I make, how do I motivate myself? And finally, how do I remain on the path? And the AI explains it. And this is, this is what our life revolves around. Because in the end, what is it? Why are we alive? Why are we doing? Why are we coming to pray? To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to find the way to believe in Allah, to maintain our Iman. And hopefully ask Allah for the reward. That's 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 the objective. These two ayat explain it and give us the guidance to do that. So, first thing, association. You are the sum, I think I mentioned this before, you are the sum of the people around you. Who are the people that you surround yourself with? Do you surround yourself with jokers? You're a joker. You surround yourself with academics, you're an academic. You surround yourself with people that play sports, you're an athlete. You surround yourself with people, all their, all, all their, um, uh, all their thinking about is how to gain money and how to, um, how to, uh, how to acquire money, how to increase their rich their, 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 their wealth to be to invest more. You're a businessman. You surround yourself with people that go to nightclubs and pubs. It's it's the same thing. It's the same concept. That's why Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that uh, your friend, you and your friend, is likened to you and either a perfume seller or a tar seller. You know the tar that they do this that they uh, pave the roads with. You know how horrible if if it's really hot and you're unlucky enough to go by them as they are laying it on the ground. It's very, very hot. Its stench is terrible, horrible. Probably if it takes your clothes, you won't go away. You probably have to throw your clothes away or something. If it's a good person, it's like a perfume seller. If you go to someone who's got, who owns a perfume shop, the whole shop smells lovely. In fact, if you go to the Oracle and go onto the second floor, I think there's a shop there that sells it. The whole area around it just smells lovely and nice. You go close to them, you, you, you're confused from the nice smells. And the same thing, there's a good association. You'll either get a bottle of perfume, you'll get good deeds, or at the very least, you'll smell something good. You won't hear anything bad. The second thing. Allah tells us straight before that to read the Qur'an. And then after that, he says, have perseverance and patience. The path is very difficult. The Iman, Sayyidina Muhammad teaches us that your Iman, your faith, your belief in Allah is like a wave. Do you know the sound waves? It goes up and it goes down. This is your Iman. At one point, it will be at a peak. At another point, it will be at a trough at the bottom. This is your Iman. It will never be at the top, always. 
and it will never be at the bottom ever, always, never. It will go up and it will go down, depending on your actions, depending on your association, depending on what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the basis of your activities should emanate from the Qur'an. In other words, what is your relation with Allah? Do you pray? Excellent. What's the first thing you do when you pray? When you say Allah, what is the first thing you do? You read Qur'an. Your relation with Allah is through the Qur'an. What does Sayyidina Muhammad tell us about when you read Qur'an? What does he tell us about that? He tells us when you read Qur'an, Allah is speaking to you. You're not reading a book. No. Allah is talking to you. And if you ponder on the Qur'an and listen, the Qur'an will speak to you. It will verbatim, it will speak to you. Not metaphorically saying it will speak to you, it will really speak to you. You'll have questions in your mind, you'll find the answers coming to you. This is the only book that, this is, in fact, this is the miracle of Islam. A continuous miracle that's lived for 15, for a million, millennium and a half, close to 1500 years. A, uh, a million, a millennium and a half, 1400 years, an, an incredible length of time. Yet we still learn from the Qur'an. Yet it still affects our hearts, just as it affected the hearts of the companions 1400 years ago. So Allah is telling you, if you have voluntarily believed in him, didn't Allah just say, Man sha'a fal yu'minu, man sha'a fal yakfur? If you, there is no compulsion in Islam. If you will it, believe. If you will it, don't believe. It's up to you. Allah's not forcing you to believe or not to believe. But if you voluntarily believe in Islam and open and speak to Allah, you speak to Allah by praying. Allah speaks to you by reading the Quran. It's a two-way path with you and Allah. If you have that discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you've started on the path. How do I maintain on the path? Look at the people that seek Allah. Hold on to them. Because these are the guys that will take, take you with them to heaven. And if worse comes to earth, may Allah protect us from hell. Who do you think is going to take you, well, take the person that's in hell to heaven? Do you know that the, the, the believers in heaven as they talk to each other, they'll remember people that were with them. They say, so-and-so is with us. Where is he? They look around, they can't find him in heaven. They ask the angels, they ask Allah, where is this, where is this, where is our brother? They say, he's, he's been punished in hell. They ask Allah that they can take him from hell. And Allah tells them, go to your brother in hell and pull him with you to heaven. So can you imagine, just by knowing someone good enough, he might be the your salvation. He might be the person who's taking your hand from hell to heaven. What more do you want? As a motivation to know people that are close, what do should we not do? Don't lend your ears to people that spout garbage. How, how can I identify someone spouting garbage? Look at the person you're listening to. Look at his lifestyle. Is he someone following his desires? Is he someone that does not remember Allah ever? That does not seek Allah? That has for forgotten Allah in his life? That whenever he speaks, he's always either insulting Islam directly or indirectly? If that's the person, don't lend your ear to him. There is no excuse. In fact, and I think we mentioned it last week, when we mentioned the A and Surah Al-Hadid about the hypocrites, the hypocrites of the, the Muslimin that lent their ears or that put themselves in a fitna, that put themselves in a test. They didn't have to. They put themselves in a, in a, in a, in a suspicious condition. The result was that their belief in Allah was shaken. Sayyidina Muhammad teaches us, do not listen to someone who would shake your belief in Allah. As long as you voluntarily believed, this is the thing in Islam. No one is forcing you to become Muslim at all. It's up to you. 
that if you're going to follow the path, and this is the motivation, the Jannah, if you're going to follow the path and you want that reward, and you're motivated enough for that reward, then this is the way to do it. You can't, you can't try this then. You don't try. Trying, I'm going to try this, see if it works for me. That means you don't genuinely believe in Islam, or you don't genuinely believe in Allah. You don't genuinely believe in what you're believing in. أقول خلي هذا استغفرات يمني لكم استغفرنا هو الغفور الرحيم دو استغفرات وعصمات أسكن في جمس استغفر الله رضي من الذين إلا الحمد لله وصلى الله على رسول الله وصحبه وسلم so let's sum what we're saying how do I Go on this path. First thing is the Quran. If you're not pondering the Quran, what does ponder mean? That means when you read, you try and understand what you're reading. I was, I was, um, I was listening. I heard someone turn turn the Quran, and I really can't remember what the name. They called it uh, a type of reading of the Quran. The the, the the Sheikh, the scholar that was reading, it was reading so fast. And he was, he was really proud saying that. I'm, it's, I'm reading Surah Al-Baqarah in 40 minutes. I honestly could not understand what he was reading. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi one of the companions asked him, how long do I, do I how, how, how long should it take me to finish the Quran? Because we know that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says the Quran complains to him about us. It says that we have deserted the Quran. The Quran will go to Allah and say to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Him, 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 her, 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 they have deserted me. So, how do I desert the Quran? How do I be someone who doesn't desert the Quran? So, Sayyidina Muhammad told the companions, at the least, read it within a month. And Alhamdulillah, it's broken now into 30 chapters, so that's a chapter a day. This is the ideal, by the way. We, like I said previously, let's aim for that one. We'll start small steps. But generally speaking, I'm talking about the hadith where one of the companions asking Sayyidina Muhammad, I want to read it in a, uh, in a month. He said, ah, he was a youth. So, you know, you know what youths are like. They're all full of passion. And he said, no, no, I can do more than this one. Sayyidina Muhammad said, fine, in two weeks. I can do more than this one. In two weeks. In a, in a week, finish it in a week. He said, I can do more than that. Sayyidina Muhammad said to him, nothing less than three days. Don't read it in less than three days. What does that mean? That means don't read it like you're reading a book. It's very easy to do Quran very quickly in a day. I think if I calculated it, 40, 40 minutes for Surah Al-Baqarah, that means it will take you like five, six, eight hours to finish Surah Al-Quran, all the Quran. Just eight hours, you'll finish the whole thing. But you haven't understood a word. It's gone, it's gone like that, it's gone in here, gone out from there. You don't understand a word. You've missed the point. The Quran is there to change your life. The, the companions... The Muhajireen, the companions that immigrated from Mecca, those that were with the Prophet for the first 13 years, they used to explain how they, their relation with the Qur'an. They used to say we did not memorize a single sign, a single ayah, except after we understood why it was sent. What the hayan haram that Allah is telling us from that ayah? Is it forbidding us from something? Is it ordering us to do something? And once we understand that, then we go to the next day. Some companions took years and years and years to memorize the Quran. And this is our lifeline with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is your relation with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran? So, for the second thing is, this, is, is the companions, but I just want to finish off with the Quran. One goes, if you're fluent in Arabic, will take you half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. If you're not fluent in Arabic, it will take you significantly longer until you get into the habit so what do we do like i said previously and and every khutbah start every day with three ayat just three listen to them so open it youtube start from surah al-fatiha from the fatiha listen to it maybe that's the exception just read the whole thing read the whole thing because you you probably everyone memorized it and then after that just listen to three listen to it see someone reading it after that open any english translations there are many one uh, i would recommend that if you want a recommendation bridges foundation have got a lovely app 
with an excellent amount of um, translation of the meanings of the Quran and, and even the person that's giving it has got a lot of videos about pondering the Quran if you're interested. But any translation authentic is good. Read it, understand it. Don't read it from one source, read it from multiple sources. Once you've understood it, the next day, go to the, go, go again. That will take you what? That, I promise you it won't take you more than half an hour. That's, that's perfect. Next day, read another three. Someone will say, well, hang on, I've, I haven't read the Quran in 30 days. Well, the point is, the whole point of reading the Quran is to have that relation, to understand, make it change your life. It won't change your life if you don't understand it. There's no point reading if you don't understand what you're reading. I'm sure you'll get thawab. Of course you will. No, no doubt about it. But Quran is there to change you. Okay. Uh, the final one is, of course, companionship. Unless you're, unless you're doing dawah, make sure the people that you surround yourself are people that you want your children to be surrounded with. Who do you want your children to be surrounded with? Uh, um, drug addicts and people that give them vapes. And I'm sure you don't want that for your children. I'm sure you want your children to be surrounded by the best of the best. Same thing for you. Yes, we're adults and we know, yeah, but the shaitan is very clever. He'll, he'll give you a million excuses not to surround yourself with good people. Find good people and surround yourself with them. I will finish by um, uh, reminding myself and you with, with the pain in our hearts in Gaza, in Sudan. Please, brothers, do not forget our brothers in the world. They are, there are brothers that are dying in, uh, I don't know how many countries to count now. In Sudan, people are dying. In, in, in Palestine, people are dying. In Lebanon, people are dying. I'm talking about civilians. I'm talking about children. I'm talking about women. I'm talking even about men that, that, have got, that don't even, haven't even seen a gun in their life. Just normal civilians. People are dying all over the world. Open a Muslim map, put your finger there, you'll find people dying in one form or another. The least you can do is remember them in your diet. The very least you can do. Remember them in your diet. If you can give to charities, give to charities. Uh, second reminder, Surat Al-Kahf for today is Friday. Don't forget to read Surat Al-Kahf. Third reminder, take your son, if you can, to the masjid, and please go to the masjid, because your children look up to you. If you don't go to the masjid, when they grow up, they won't go to the masjid. Take them with you to the masjid. There are many mosques, different times. Alhamdulillah, time is going to, by the end of the month, it's going to go back one hour. It will be easier for you to go to the mosque. Go to Aisha, just go to Aisha. Because when you go to Aisha, it gives you, and you pray in the mosque, it, it's as if you've spent half the night praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awesome reward. Final thing, read the Quran. One ayah, two ayah, three ayah every day. As we described a moment ago. In Yidan, for Amin, I'm going to do dua tomorrow. Allahum laka alhamdu hatta tarda, laka alhamdu ida radid, laka alhamdu ba'da rida. Allahum salli wa sallam ala Muhammadin fil awaleen, wa salli wa sallam ala Muhammadin fil akhirin, wa salli wa sallam ala Muhammadin fil al ala ila yawm al-deen. رب الحمد لله ذي كمر بين صغيرة سبحانك اللهم إني ضامت نفسي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر ذنوب إلا أنت اللهم احفظ إخوانا في فلسطين اللهم احفظ إخوانا في الشام احفظ إخوانا في السودان احفظ إخوانا في برما احفظ إخوانا في كشمير وفي تركستان وفي كل بقعة من بقاع الأرض يحارب في عبادك ويعذب في أولياءك اللهم احكم دماءهم اشف مرضاهم آمن روعاتهم احفظ أعراضهم استر عوراتهم أكس عليهم أطعم جائعهم أسقع طشهم أنزل السكينة والطمئنة على قلوبهم اللهم يا رب العالمين ردهم إلى أهلهم ردا جميلا سالمين غانمين لا حزاء ولا مفتونين اللهم أعين الحق حقا وزقنا اتباعه وأعين الباطل باطل وزقنا اجتنابه أو الله forgive our parents as they brought us up whilst we were young أو الله forgive our sins what we know what we don't know what we've done in public what we've done in secret أو الله guide us to every act and deed that takes us to heaven أو الله Protect us from every act and deed that would make us closer to hell. Oh Allah, protect, provide security and protection and alleviate the pain of our brothers and our sisters and our children in Palestine, in Gaza, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Sudan, in every part of the world. <laughs> Allah, Allah, Allah.